Hello friends. Happy Thursday. Surprise, surprise, look where I am. I was actually allowed to go back to work today. Well, I've been allowed to go back to work since uh, the beginning of this week, but I can only go in if it's absolutely necessary. And it turns out most of my job can be done remotely, so. Today something came up that required my physical presence and I was able to prove to a few people that I do still exist. So that was pretty exciting. Got a um, shade Connecticut, uh, underground shade Connecticut. Uh, get that lit. I'd hoped to do a lunchtime live yesterday, but it just didn't work out. So, you get to hear me ramble as I drive home. Uh, and I do not work here. I get that question all the time. This is just a strip mall near where I work. And away we go. I'm afraid I'm going to do one of these someday and like run over an old lady or something. There'll be video evidence. That won't be good. I would never run over an old lady. Not on purpose. But you know, you gotta kind of stay out of my way. Uh, today has been a, a good day. I got. It was a pretty busy morning, and I didn't have to get into work until 3 o'clock. It's uh, like 20 to 5 now. So, you know, overall, not too shabby. So I want to tell you, I, I, you know, normally when I do these drive things, I, I just talk about what's on my mind, and but lately, I've been trying to avoid talking about what's on my mind, because a lot of the times it's political and polarizing, and you know, I believe what I believe, and you believe what you believe, and we should be okay with that. But the truth is, in this modern age, there's a lot of people that aren't okay with that. And that's a shame. Because if we don't get to express our opinions and hear others express their opinions, we, we can't test our beliefs. I've talked quite a bit during these things about the concept of social programming and how we were being well programmed I've recently oh that was pleasant <laughs> I've recently heard it referred to as uh, we're being hacked um, it's not a matter of we're being programmed or we're being hacked we've been hacked it's done. The job is done. And the truth is, it hasn't worked on everyone, thankfully. But it's worked on a lot of people. You know, it's worked on people that are intellectually lazy, weak-minded, and don't want to dig for the truth. And that's really sad. If you don't believe me about this, try a simple experiment. Pick something that's been somewhat controversial. And the example I'm going to use, and I haven't actually done this, but 
I'm, I'm certain it'll work. Um, I'm going to use hydroxychloroquine because that certainly has been controversial over the past few months. Go ahead and do a Google search on hydroxychloroquine and just note what the top five results are. Now go to, uh, what is it, DuckDuckGo or Dogpile or uh, Yandex and do the same search and compare the results. You cannot tell me that Google is not manipulating those search results. I've done it for other, I haven't actually done it for hydroxychloroquine, but I'm, I'm nearly certain that you will see a remarkable uh, difference between the results and one that shows a very clear bias on the part of Google. Or perhaps a very clear bias on the part of everyone but Google, but I don't think that's likely true. And the reason I've been thinking about this today is this morning I got a phone call. Uh, I answered the phone and, you know, hello, sir, we're doing a poll to get an idea of where people are politically. Would you mind taking the poll? And I said, sure. The gentleman was very, very polite. You know, always called me sir. Um, bit. But he was clearly reading a script, you know, as you would expect a pollster to be doing. And I was struck by the first question. Now listen carefully to the wording of this, because the, the wording is actually kind of important. Um, and that's the, the you know. I've, I've been saying for, for a long time now, uh, and I don't know where I got this from, but words have meanings, and the way we use them determines our reality. So you got to be careful with words. So what this pollster asked me was, I'm going to try to, as faithfully as possible, replicate this first question. Do you agree with the way Trump is handling the failed economy? And he actually used the phrase, the failed economy. Or do you think Joe Biden would do a better job? And I was struck by, first off, the fact that he, he starts off just referring to the president as Trump, which is a code word, you know, you know it's, it's, a, it's, it's basically a four-letter word. Okay, it's a fun, you, you know what I mean. Um, and then Joe Biden, you know, said as if, you know, we've got a savior. Here. So I responded, the question is not valid. And <laughs> you should not do this to these people. <laughs> they are not prepared to actually talk to you. <laughs> oh, oh, sir, the, the question is certainly valid. <laughs> Could you please answer it? So, so I, I responded, sure. I agree with the job that President Donald Trump is doing with regards to the economy. And his reaction to this was <sighs> like an audible groan. He, then, he had probably about 20 questions, and they were all very similar. Uh, you know, do you, do, do you think that Trump is handling the situation with China in an appropriate manner? Or would Joe Biden be the better person to deal with this critical foreign relation uh, policy point? So I kept answering President Donald Trump, and he got more and more incensed at this and I could just see the guy grimacing he stopped saying Joe Biden he, he switched to just Biden to try to soften it a bit but I didn't change I, I kept saying President Donald Trump and the, the, so this went on to the end of it and the last set of questions he said okay I just have a few more questions for you 
for the next questions, I, w I need to know who you would trust more with each of these things, uh, Trump or Biden. And I said, well, I, I wouldn't trust Biden to watch a rock. And he's, oh, well, well, we can't take one answer. You have to answer each question individually. Okay. So he goes through the six questions, and I, you know, I just answered Trump to all of them because I don't trust Joe Biden. I think Joe Biden is uh, not trustworthy. Anyway, we get through this. And how do you think the, the conversation ends? You know, I've done this before, and I've, I've typically gotten a, thank you, sir, we really appreciate your time, have a nice day, that kind of thing. <laughs> he, he asks the last question. I respond, President Donald Trump. And he responds, thank you, and hangs up the phone. <laughs> Now, I doubt very much that my responses to those questions are going to be included in this poll. This, this pollster clearly had a bias. The poll had a bias. If you get these calls, and you know they're going to become more and more common, you, you certainly will get them. Listen to the words. Listen to the questions that they're asking. Because, you know, someone that's not thinking about the issues might hear, you know, the failed economy and think, oh, gosh, the president's let us down. It's not true. The economy hasn't failed. The economy is doing very, very well, especially when you consider the, uh, the mess we've had with COVID-19. The economy's fantastic. And the rebound that we're seeing has, has outstripped everyone's expectations. You know, it's, it's, it's just remarkable how strong our economy is and how resilient it is. But you know, the other point that I've been thinking about a lot is that it's remarkable how resilient our country is. We've been through a lot over, over our 200 plus years of existence. And we've had a, a bit of a calm period. If you didn't hear that, the bus is turning. Yeah, we haven't had to deal with a lot of issues. You know, since, since the whole civil rights um, period, we've been relatively calm. And now we're... We're seeing a resurgence of, of some of those issues, and we're seeing a lack of calm, and we're reacting to it like it's the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. This is normal. You know, most countries are going through this constantly. We are we're an outlier for not having these problems. But the problem is that we've lost the, the bedrock of truth. I don't know what to trust anymore. I can't, I can't trust a poll. I just, I just told you why. I mean, I cannot trust any poll. I can't trust the news. You know, you watch CNN and you hear mostly peaceful protests, and then you turn on Fox News and, and you hear they're burning down the town and they're reporting from the same place and, and don't get me wrong I don't trust Fox News either there is no longer a source that I can trust for information so I have to spend all this time you know, just ashed all over here I have to spend all this time hunting down the facts, you know, trying to find the, the original source for these things. Um, yeah, example, Biden had a rally in Florida and 18 people showed up. And there was one, one publication that pointed that out.
think I might have just lost the external video here. I don't know what the what just happened there. We'll get it sorted. Or maybe you won't have any external video for the rest of this. I don't know. I should try to have a point before I end this. My point is that we have to be careful. The facts are not available anymore for the most part. You can't trust Google. You can't trust Twitter. You can't trust any of the major news outlets. And you certainly can't trust polls. And that's true whether you support President Donald Trump or whether you support Joe Biden. Uh, it's true for both of you. You, know, you should want to know what's really happening in the world. You know, this new thing, there was a... I don't want to get into what it was, but there was a really interesting thing that happened on Twitter uh, yesterday. And they didn't take it down immediately, but they put a... I think it was manipulated media tag on it. I think that was the term. You know, they're flagging things like the, this, this post contains information that cannot be confirmed is misleading or whatever and they're just outright taking things down that they don't agree with and why are you doing that well it's to protect you protect me from what when did we become so feeble-minded that we can't see something that may or may not be true and think for ourselves about it when did we start needing filters And who gets to decide what's filtered? <sighs> it's a scary time. But not scary in a doomsday sense. Uh, I just worry. How are people going to get the information they need? But no matter what happens, we're a resilient country, and we'll get through this. And that's important to keep in mind. No matter what happens, we're going to continue to be the United States of America. We're going to continue to be a democratic republic. We're going to continue to be one nation under God. Anyway, folks, I think I've rambled enough and lost enough subscribers. Friday night. <laughs> you probably wouldn't like me bringing this up at this point. Friday night, we've got uh, Mike from Briar Blues on the live stream. Uh, Mike's fantastic. Uh, you're going to really enjoy that, so please don't miss it. Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. And then on Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern, I am doing a giveaway, and I will stick the... Um, uh, better not do that. I will I will stick the, the little giveaway thing in this video so you can see what I'm giving away. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, 7LE Series 3. It's a bent apple. I cannot remember the numbers, but they'll be on the uh, the image that you're looking at right now. And I'm going to give that away. Uh, all you have to do is uh, answer some trivia questions, and you might just win a pipe. So join us Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern for that. I'm a very cautious driver when it comes to making turns on red. I think I'm okay now. So 4, p 4 p.m. Eastern on Saturday for the uh, live stream giveaway. Tomorrow night, Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, Mike from Briar Blues. So I look forward to seeing you then. And you all take care, and I'll talk to you soon.